Hello, everyone. Rhonda Hall here. I just decided to record some stream of consciousness. <clears throat> so I have no idea where it's going to go. And I clearly am caring less this morning about my hair being in the right place and is the background right and all of that lighting. So just flow with me here. <clears throat> What I've been thinking about is any number of things. Um, my life tends to collide with living in the present moment <clears throat> and living in this earthly, three-dimensional reality. The gifts that I feel I bring are an awareness of beauty and art and energy that finds its way through words and art and connection. Um, I just has, I had a visit by my niece, her, my grandnephew, her son Connor is now 14 and uh, when he was barely two, he was diagnosed with cancer. <clears throat> and he's still here. He still has challenges as a result of his chemo and radiation journey. Um, but he's still present. And then I have a daughter, my grandson, who has autism. being, walking with, holding the space during those experiences has brought us all to a place of really having a firsthand glimpse of how precious life is and how you seize every moment. You take advantage of every moment. <clears throat> For my niece, it's always that question of how long is Connor going to be here? When will cancer find its way to him again? Because statistically, as a result of how young his little body was assaulted, then that's the, the, the thought, thoughts that are put into and, and find a home in your consciousness of celebrating every moment because you don't know when the next moment might not be there. Uh, with my grandson, Brody, it's challenging in a different way. Because, again, in our minds and the way the script is written and statistics plant in your consciousness that he will be here, his longevity statistically seems more certain <clears throat> however you don't have the advantage of the same feelings of connection while he's here uh, even though he's high functioning it's still you know anxiety driven meltdowns just challenges as a result of his autism so it's it's relating to him in the ways that you can but you never get the same sense of satisfaction as my niece with Connor. And there is that stealth anxiety of the story that lives in your head about an uncertain future. And I think it was Mark Twain who said, I've experienced some really, I'm paraphrasing, but I've experienced some really terrible things in my life, some of them which actually happened. And so we can always be compelled to be anxious when we're thinking of the future. Um, and in an odd way of being present in the moment, because I know, especially with the cancer diagnosis, it's the whole thing of seizing the moment, but almost to the point of irresponsibility. 
because somehow we still have to match the reality that we live in that says you can't pay your bills with good intention. Um, somehow you need to balance being fully present, embracing the 3D reality, but living from an awareness that you've been given an insight to that every moment is precious and with my near-death experience, it tells me there's something really powerful and mystical and mysterious and un amazing, and yet on the other side, that life doesn't end with this experience. Um, and even that glimpse of the other side that I experienced that says we lose the body, we lose time, we lose space, we become pure potential, we become pure love by the nature of what eternity and the universe is, as far as we can tell, is that will change form or take a different form too. So it, it takes creating a dance a friendship with uncertainty with so it's that odd uh, odd inner and outer experience of those realities that certainly have me going from time to time my greatest gift comes in a in a form that is more in an awareness or comes from an awareness of there being something more or different or the only certainty that I know of is love and that I'm a bridge person to bring that to this reality. And so it all becomes that dance of how do I sustain myself in this reality living from that reality? We're like, where's the bridge? So I'm an edge walker, a bridge person. So I don't know why it felt important to me to just sit and share about those ramblings and what has been going through my, my head lately. Um, you know, any number of reminders have come with friends of mine who are either celebrating one friend, dear friend who celebrated his 80th birthday and that with that awareness that there are fewer steps ahead than the ones that you've already taken, no matter how you slice it, with a friend 10 years younger than I who is facing open heart surgery the end of this month and any number of my dear friends walking the journey with cancer, especially my dear friend, um, Mary, that I'm living in an awareness of how fragile life is. Always at that choice point of you either get really panic stricken because of that or you surrender to it. Um, never really certain of my place in it. So making plans and then knowing that the universe laughs when we make other plans. So as best I know how in any given moment, it's about love. I'm grateful to be on that journey of making every moment a keepsake moment, even the messy ones, even the ones where I'm uncertain, scared, um, unsure, as well as at the same time, feeling a deep certainty and knowing and caring and love and presence. Um, I live in a beautiful place. And this morning, uh, there were, uh, every Tuesday morning, I walk to one of our bunkers at our fort here and sing with, with a friend of mine, this friend who's having surgery, heart surgery this week. And I could hear the call of the eagle while we were there. And when I came home to where I lived, there were three, two juvenile eagles and, and one bald-headed that were flying, just dancing 
in the the air pockets around and along my bluff. And I don't know if I can actually show you out the window. Um, the, the representation of freedom. And freedom requires that dancing in the air pockets, uh, going with the flow. Um, so I'm in the uncertain flow, high and low, dancing between seasons here in the Northwest, dancing between seasons in my own heart with the awareness of my journey of, of aging and where I fit in that and how to be present with those that I love who are in their own process of aging, whether they're my grandkids or my daughters or my niece or my friends. So I'm just grateful, grateful that we're all in this together. So have fun dancing on the wind today with me. And now I think I'll go comb my hair. <laughs> Blessings to all of you.